write linear equations in slope intercept form. I'm going to go kind of quick here. My goal is to get this video uh, less than 10 minutes. So let's see how I can do with that. Uh, so here are our standards. I'm not going to read them. FBF1, AC, D2. Take a look at, it, look at them. All right, this is what we did before. We graphed equations. Now we're going to write equations. And we're going to say why. And so one of the reasons you could do it is so you can model distances and rates of change. All right, so let's write an equation from a graph. Here's an equation or uh, a line, okay? So we're gonna take the information from this graph and we're gonna put it into an equation. So we're just gonna reverse what we were doing before. So we know that uh, slope intercept form looks like y equals mx plus b, right? y equals mx plus b. And we know that we need to find the slope, m, and we can find the y-intercept, which is b. Well, we have a graph right here. We've got some points. It looks like we can just go ahead and one, we can find the slope here, which is two over one, right? So I start here, I go up two over one, slope is two. Now I'm not gonna write it as two over one because when I write it in my equation, I don't need to write it as a ratio, okay? So we're simplifying that. So two over one becomes two. And then I identify the y-intercept, it's here. So B is gonna be equal to three. Let's plug it into my equation. So I'm gonna get Y equals two X plus three. <coughs> 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 Excuse me. I might take a couple seconds to not hit my goal of 10 minutes now. All right, let's try another one. Why don't you go ahead, pause the video, see if you can identify the slope and the y-intercept, go. Okay, so hopefully when you looked at this, you said, all right, y equals mx plus b. I need to find a slope. My slope is 1 half, it's 1, rise 1, run 2. And my y-intercept is negative 4. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug this into my equation. So I'm going to get y equals 1 half x minus 4. Now you might have written plus a negative 4, right? You might have said something like uh, plus negative 4, okay? That's saying the same idea, right? All right, let's go on. Here's another one. Why don't you go ahead? Why don't you see if you can do the entire equation on your own? Go. All right, so looking at this, let's go ahead and take a look. Y equals mx plus b. Let's identify the slope. First of all, I know it's negative, right? It's going down. So from here, I can say, okay, it's going to go, let's see, down one, two, three, four, five, six, and then run two. Again, a lot of times I like to run first run to, then drop. It doesn't really matter. You're doing the same thing. It just matters how you actually write it. So in this case, you're going down six. You're going to run two. We're going to simplify that. So that's actually negative six over two is the same as negative three. And that's negative three over one. And let's go ahead and check that to make sure we simplified correctly. So that's saying that there's actually a point in between here and here. So I'm going to go down one, two, three over one. Boom. There's my point. This line isn't perfect, so it's not going to look exactly, but it's should be, there should be a point there, and then I get another point there, okay? Y-intercept is 1. Put it in my equation, y equals negative 3x plus 1. Okay? And you should match it up, you know, you should look at this and be like, oh, okay, I see this. Negative 3, okay? It's going to be negative, it should be steeper, right? This, this, this number is bigger than uh, the parent function, so it's going to be steeper, and it's going to, you know, it's going to move up 1 from the parent function. All right, let's try another one. You do this one, go. All right, hopefully you identified the slope as negative two thirds and the y-intercept as negative five. Plug that into an equation and you get negative two thirds x minus five. Now sometimes you'll also see people will put the x up in the numerator. So they'd say negative two x and then over three. It's the same idea. All right, moving on. Let's find the slope of this one. Do uh, find the slope of the intercept. Go. Okay, so y equals mx plus b. What is the slope here? The slope is nothing. There is no slope. That line is flat. And my y-intercept is 5. So when you plug this in, you actually get y equals 0x plus 5. Well, 0x is nothing. That's just going to 0 times anything is 0. So I can really actually just simplify this line as y equals 5. And that, that actually should make sense, right? Because anytime you graph a point where y is the, the, the you know, the, the y coordinate is 5, it's going to be on this line, right? So like 1 comma 5, that's here. 2 comma 5, that's here. So you're just saying no matter what x is, y is just going to be 5. All right. Here's another one. Go ahead and try to find this one. 
All right, this one the M is undefined. Okay, so when your M is undefined, that's that that gets a little bit uh, crazy. Okay, and we know that B is nothing. So what you need to understand there is if the if it's undefined and it's a vertical line, then it's going to be X is equal to something, and in this case, we're equal to three. Okay. Okay, so let's say I tell you the slope is eight and the y-intercept is negative 7, you should be able to write a, uh, an equation for that. And let's say I give you another one where the slope is 3 fourths and the y-intercept is negative 3, you should be able to write an equation for that. So go ahead, pause the video, and you try to write an equation for both of those. Go. Okay, so the first one, hopefully you had plugged in m is 8 and y is, or b is negative 7. So you get 8x minus 7. And the second one should have been 3 fourths x minus 3. Okay, pretty basic, I think. I think you guys should be doing fantastic at this. All right, well, let's try it a little differently. Let's say, okay, here I have uh, a function, and I'm giving you a, the uh, two points here, okay? And this is in function notation. So I need to write an equation for this. Okay, well, if I'm going to need to write an equation, then I need to know the y-intercept, and I also need to know the slope. So in this case, I have two points here. I have f of 0 is equal to 5 and f of 4 is equal to 17. Well, 0 is the input and 5 is the output. So this would actually be 0 comma 5. Same idea here, right? If it's f of x, this is x, this is the result of plugging 4 in there. So I've got two points. Okay, we're going to write those points. So I've got 0 comma 5 and I've got 4 comma 17. Now that first one, notice that x is a 0, so that's going to tell us a little something also. All right, so now let's find the, the rise and the run, okay? And so I actually am going to use the um, that method where I just look to see, you know, how much it goes up and down. So from 5 to 17, right, that's going to go up 12, and then from 0 to 4, that goes up 4. So when I simplify that, I get m is equal to 3. Okay. And the nice thing is here is I already know the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 0, 0,5. That means b is 5. Okay. So there it is, 3x plus 5. Now if I have two points, you can find the slope. Once you know the slope, if you have the y-intercept, you plug it into your equation and you're good to go. I'm not going to ask you just to... I'm, all of these right now, you're going to end up with the y-intercept. Um, You'll see later that, uh, um, well, the next the next section we do, you won't have an intercept, I'll, I'll, but I'll teach you how to find it. Okay, so y equals 3x plus 5. That was our final one here. Okay, so uh, this is straight out, this is a word problem we got. So recording studio charges musicians and uh, an initial fee of $50 to record an album. Studio time costs an additional $35 per hour. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to try to write an equation that models that situation, okay? That's going to go back with more of the the CED one, right? Cre creating an equation in two or more variables to represent relationships. So why don't you go ahead and try to do that. Go. All right. So we're going to write, yes, we said that already, okay? And then we're going to find the second part. We'll find the cost at 10 hours of studio time. All right, cost changes at a constant rate, so you can write an equation in slope-intercept form to model the total cost, right? Average rate of change, we know that, okay? The rate of change in this problem is the cost per hour, and the starting value, B, is the initial fee, meaning even if I don't, like, at the very beginning, before I've even rented it, I have to, there's a starting value, right? There's this initial cost that I have to pay. So what's that going to look like? That's going to look like the total cost of something is going to be equal to the cost per hour times the studio time plus the initial fee, which looks really a lot like y equals mx plus b, right? y equals mx plus b. All right, so cost is equal to 35t plus 50, okay? And if I know that my studio time is 10 hours, then I'm going to plug that in. And I'm going to find out that it's $400 for 10 hours. Okay, and there you have it. 
That's the that's the basic idea. So get ready to practice tomorrow writing uh, equations in slope-intercept form. I'll see you then.